thing. You gotta be ratchet to make it across. I, when I saw Kevin Nguyen, I was like, I know Kevin Nguyen, and it's just he never had a name before. <laughs> Eat that, Vice. You can't get that. Sh Welcome to our brand new series, Culture Table, where we sit down with comedians and artists from different Asian communities and ask them the hard questions. Our first episode is about the Vietnamese American diaspora. We talked to Sara, Mike, Kim, and Quan at DND Restaurant in Brooklyn to cover everything from ABGs and Kevin Wynn memes to the Vietnam War. Let's go. Hi, I'm Quan Ngo. I'm the sous chef here in DND. To sum up the restaurant, I would say that we're trying to go and showcase to the world and there's more than just fun by me. And that was a foundational thing to kind of set this Vietnamese culture and food. We can go in, we introduce something new. Things that we all grew up with, we as Vietnamese Americans know, but everyone should know as well too. Yo, you guys, we are here at DND. I'm with Sarah, Mike, Kim. I want to talk about everything from Vietnamese stereotypes to ABGs to Kevin Wynn to the memes and Vietnamese food. Yeah. You guys down with that? Yes, I'm into it. it. I'm into it. Let's do it. Let's start off by what, what are we looking at okay. right now? So this is the Ban Bo Chien. Um, and I don't think it's very authentically Vietnamese. We mentioned earlier it was mostly chiu chow, but in, in Houston, Texas, there's one restaurant that has served this, and everyone orders this at this table. This, this restaurant was known for the Ban Bo Chien. Which actually is a great segue to my first topic, so we should all eat this, but I got a really great segue. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Chinese people in Vietnam, you can kind of say they're almost like the Koreans in Japan in that they are immigrants and they came over but they are definitely like outsiders. outsiders. You know, the second generation, like, you know, my sister married someone who's Chinese Vietnamese. It wasn't controversial, but I think if it was like my mom, if my mom married someone like that, that would be a problem. But the thing is, is that Vietnamese people and Chinese people are like very interrelated. Our culture came from China. Where do we get chairs from? Whoa. That's from Chinese people, dog. Yeah. <laughs> when we think about Chinese Vietnamese, it's kind of like not the same as like if, if someone from Brazil moved to the US and then they're Brazilian American, right? It's like nationality, ethnicity to another nation. Chinese Vietnamese is the same transaction, right? At the end of the day, people move from nation to nation all the time. Um, and I think it's normal and I think it's fine. I think that like you can be culturally Vietnamese if you were like born you're there heart. or you came there when you were two years old. Like you're gonna be culturally Vietnamese the way I feel culturally American, right. but my ethnic bloodline is Vietnamese. For example, you know? Mike does not speak Vietnamese. But I'm Vietnamese. Yeah. <laughs> you look at the camera. Right, what if you found out you were like 20% Chinese? <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if all my Viet friends <laughs> refuse to I'd take like, 23 no. of me? I mean, that's a good question because I'm so Vietnamese. And I'm, yeah. so, I'm like so proud to be Vietnamese. So if I found that out, I might be like, ah. Oh. I gotta rewrite my narrative a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing with Vietnamese people, like, we were conquered so many times that yeah. we're like a little bit of everything. True. French. A little bit French, you know, like, Probably there's randomly, Chinese. like, sometimes there's Japanese sh like you'll yeah. see. Yeah. There's like Chinese sh These are some Khmer, Khmer, like Cambodian. All that stuff's all mixed together, so. Yeah. Why don't we uh, <laughs> table this and do a 23 and me follow up? Okay. 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 Yeah. People aren't scared of shit. And that's that's what I mean. We're stupid. We don't care about school loans. We don't care about gun violence. They go come for you, Mick. They come for you in the comments. We're crazy, dog. Vietnamese are fearless, and I think this dish embodies it. Kim, can you explain what's going on? So this is a, a house-made jerky, and on the side is actually ants. Oh, I have an ant. What? There. Right there, you see it's that? a little buggy. Whoa! It's like an ant spice dip. Yo, you mean just oh my god. You know, we did not yeah. plan that fearless segue to the ant dip. Yo, right here, it's right literally on top of my Oh top my god. Go. Can you see that? This is why there was never any Vietnamese people on Fear Factor. <laughs> hey, they'd just be like, like no oh problem. Me. I'll yeah. be in a scared Chinese person. No! <laughs> David, don't be Chinese. Eat those ants, man. <laughs> Yo, that's really good. It's right. so bomb. Hold on, let's. Oh, wow. VIP service. <laughs> <laughs> that is um one of the reasons you guys' Yelp scores are so high. Wow. Yo, all the Whoa. Is so, ants. So Ooh, even so more. Just, wow, like that, that jerky is it. amazing. It's good. It yeah. really reminds me, it's kind of similar, would you say, to the Thai jerky? Kind of like Malaysian jerky, but we made it in-house. That's really yeah. good. But I guess with, from the ant thing, yeah. we're pushing the edge today. We got to get in some Vietnamese stereotypes. What do you guys think about the, the, the stereotype? that like via people I guess like are ratchet. Well, cause we're fearless. Yep. Yeah. It ties into the whole thing that we're fearless, we don't care. Not necessarily my family, but you know, ultimately at the end of the day, we're like, we're refugees. Yeah. We you came here with literally you gotta nothing. Be, you gotta be ratchet to make it across. Yeah, yeah dude. I think, I think with like, there's a wave of like Chinese people who came through. And so I feel like for Vietnamese people, you're kind of seen as like, 
the second Asian people. We kind of have to speak out a little yeah. bit. I think we're actually sort of a lot in public settings. Like, we're just loud as fuck. We're very loud. My, all the aunties, my mom. And so sometimes I'd be like, why are you yelling? She's like, I'm not yelling. This is how I talk. Kim, you got comment because Houston is known as a ratchet place. I mean, they're pretty gangster, I guess. <laughs> Did you see her driver's license? No, I didn't see it. Can I see it? Oh, whoa. Oh, oh shit. Oh. That's a ratchet photo. This driver's license got in a fight at a car restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. At a 24 hour flight. At, a 20, at 2 in the morning after clubbing. This very driver's license was. What's that <laughs> looking at? You know? Guys, <laughs> what is the ABG exactly? Because I'm from the East Coast. So I feel like an East yeah, Coast Yeah, that's. ABGs are very LA. It's very that's different. LA. I guess I would say that the hoochie shorts. Asian baby girl, but then yeah. it also was Asian, Asian baby gangster. Yeah. So basically, I think, I think at the time it was just somebody who's the girl of a gangster and just holding it down in the, within that world though. We have this friend called Elizabeth Tran and she just went on this huge rant on um, one of our videos being like, all these new girls, they just adopting the style. They don't know what it's like to hide guns. They don't know what it's like to talk to police. They, blah, 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 blah. They don't know any of this. It's just a look to them. Someone paved the way so you could look like that. Yeah. You know what it is? There's no like, Queen Beyonce of the ABGs that can like talk down on everybody and be like, yeah. you might have to say it was Tila Tequila. Stop. No. 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 She's right. a Nazi. She wasn't an ABG. At hold one on there. Hold on here. Life? Hold on here. She kind of was just out there and doing like this crazy thing, and for a while everyone was like, okay, this is cool, and then all of a sudden she became a Nazi, and then things. Yeah, were I gotta like, get okay. the opinions she on. Wasn't which is ABG? But, but I think an import model and an ABG is not mutually exclusive. For someone like Tila or someone like Jamie to represent all of Vietnamese girls, we're too nuanced. You like to pick these extremes, and they're you know they're fine if you yeah. want to fuck with them, but like they're not representative of the Vietnamese women I know who they are real estate agents. Have right now, yeah. out there, right? But I mean, real briefly, I feel like a lot of it is just like cultural, like where you grew up, what neighborhood you grew up in, like when you grew up, who, what high school you. But is there some sense that if you become like too Viet, it won't hurt your chances of being exposed in like the mainstream society? I think that there's like a growing second generation Vietnamese crowd coming up that we're embracing Vietnamese because it's not like taboo being Vietnamese anymore. You know, I, I think that we all have a collective sense of what is Vietnamese growing up as a Vietnamese American too, which all ties us in together. You're, you're gonna lean into being who you are, whatever that is. I think we're doing it right now. Yeah. Going back to the whole restaurant, this is our entryway to, to all the things that we know, but y'all don't know yet. How do we know nowadays that there's cultural capital in owning up to your motherland? Who's in it just to come up? Because now it's a pathway, and who was like for like you guys? Who was always into it from the jump? I think it's just like the appreciation of it, right? Like Juan was saying, we use the food to kind of showcase and tell a story about Vietnamese culture. Everything that we do on this menu is not pulling off Instagram or anything. We're not trying to pull it out of our ass and like, hey, this is what we want to do, this is here. All these have a story, not within the Vietnamese culture, but within ourselves. So I can go and I can cite something off the menu, and that can be made by my mom, straight up, this is how she did it. We're, we're not only trying to make something taste good, but we're saying this is the, where we're coming from. We're, we're an information provider. So let's set it right uh, before we set anything else. Oh yeah, well let's get into some of this next round of food. You guys, what are we looking at here? Because this is an amazing spread. So um, all these dishes are primarily brunch. You wouldn't really eat them during the dinner time. This is something where you go with your family and then do the small pickings that you have. So we're gonna start off with this first dish. This is a pan can. These muffins, which are uh, really interesting, we get these clay pots, small little vessels, and you, you've seen them before. Uh, we get them from straight from the lab. And so they're going um, straight inside dry, and we scrape them off so that way you get a little bit of that char on the muffin. So you're gonna dip it inside that nook chum. You can go and like break up the meatball, you can dip it inside. We use the vehicle as like a scoop. And so inside right here is some uh, quail light that we cracked up inside too. Oh man, this is so good. Is that your first time having it? Yeah. I'm not had uh, I'm not had this before. So let's talk about where is everybody's parents from in Vietnam? Because it does matter, right? Because there's sort of like a north, a middle, a south. Yeah. Is your family yeah. from the north or south? From the south. South as well. Yeah. My family's from the north. My dad's from the north, my mom's from the south. Okay, so you won the war. <laughs> well, we were in the south later, but. Uh, right. Tradition, culturally, my, my, my mom's side was from the north, culturally from the north. Came to right. the south. Has the Vietnamese American narrative 
move past the war and the provincialism, or is it still there to some extent? For sure, I feel like, especially in New York, we have a lot of Vietnamese nationals that come to the restaurant, and they're all from the north. For them, they're younger, they're, they're not of the war generation, so they don't really see the, the heaviness or importance of the war, whereas our parents who left their country... Right. How much, ideally, in your opinion, should people think about the war and look back on it? One time we got flown out to this VSA thing randomly in... Uh, Shout out to VSA. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have VSA convention. I know, I know all of them. And I remember it was crazy because the, the rich family that funded it was a rich family from the South. And they, they gave a speech. And the, the last thing that she said is she was just like, you guys need to go back to Vietnam and take, take it back, back take over. It back. You know what's kind of funny though is that in a way we are. Because when you go back to Vietnam, being an American is like cool. It's yeah. like we, they, they look at us and they go, oh, there's like another way to do things. And they're very open minded. Like uh, you talk to a lot of Vietnamese people, young, young Vietnamese people in Vietnam. They they we want to learn everything there is about the world. Yeah. They're so interested in everything. They have their, they have such good hearts. In a way, this is us coming back right, with yeah. this deliciousness and like yeah. cool haircuts and tattoos and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not a uh, hostile takeover. It's yeah. you're saying culturally. It's a yeah. cultural yeah. Take. Cultural so, and mindset kind of. Growing up in Boston, my dad's from North Carolina, from the South, so I didn't have a hostile environment. I grew up thinking that Ho Chi Minh was revolutionary in the same category as Che Guevara. So I grew up with the Brandy. When I went to East LA, it was all Southern Vietnamese folks, and they were so anti-North, right? And I was like, I've never experienced this, right? Um, it just shows how um, diverse and complicated the Vietnamese community is. Yeah. Well, I was I was a part of that DSA at Virginia Tech too. I was I was like one of the officers there, and so we have people and grandparents who are from the war. They're coaching you on how to think about it, right? Yeah, but they don't really think about it at all. It's like two generations down where it's it's just like, oh, that was my grandparents' thing. That was their history. That's not my story to tell. Yes, I have affiliation with it, but I don't feel any sort of type of way against it. Like, I'll have, I'll have my parents tell me, but for one, I didn't go and experience it personally. Uh, I guess, what, uh, what is this right here? Because this is a dish oh, that I think yeah. more people are familiar with. This is uh, yeah. so good. This is a uh, bun kun. So traditionally, bun kun is has been a dish has been Chinese, Vietnamese, you know, there's a lot of Chinese influence. Inside we have some uh, ground pork and woodier mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, we make our uh, housemate jiao gou right there. Um, it oh, goes in. Yeah, we make the jiao gou, we make the fried shallots. And you were saying that even in uh, north or the south they call the jiao gou something different? A different word? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is a classic dish. Usually, if you go to a restaurant that has this, and it's really good, that's the only thing you eat. Yeah. How much of how much do you guys have in your house at any given time? I usually have two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have two. Oh, and then when you're growing up, though, when you don't know how to cook, you go get like white rice, you get jiao gou, yep. you don't get that maggi, and you cook yeah, that shit no, no, over, no, no. and that shit is lunch because you don't know how to cook. Would you compare it to like almost like call it like a Vietnamese spam or what? Is, I mean, it's much more yeah, fresher than it's spam. Vietnamese, Vietnamese, Vietnamese spam. It's like a Vietnamese spam. Vietnamese. Vietnamese yeah. alone. It is very big. When the zombie apocalypse happens, everyone's gonna be starving, but Vietnamese people will just be like having mad zaw and just like eating it like, like no no problem, you know, hey, what's going on? Oh that zombie looks bad, but like we still we, we got food, so it's all good. Uh what else we got here? Oh, we got yeah, so this is uh soy man. So this is a uh, sticky rice that we make, um house made tar. Tar is just a seasoned soy sauce. We make a in-house pate, we make our own lap sung or lap chung right. in-house as well. Um, got some pickled scallions and then some fried uh, chicken thighs. Here's more. Th yeah. There's another delicious thing that, like you know, we got from Chinese people. Lapso. Right. In Cantonese, we just call it lap churn, so it sounds it's sounds yeah, like almost the same it's the word. Same yeah. word. Yeah. This is like really Vietnam, right? All up in here. All right. You know, we got to talk about the. Put yeah. a rocket dog on it, and it's good. Okay. We got to talk about the Frenchness of Vietnam. Okay. So there was always this thing. Uh, and it happened a lot more like a few years ago, where somebody would kind of brag that they're part French. Like a Vietnamese person would be like, "I'm French," and I'm like, "How French are you?" And they're like. Like one sixteenth, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm, like, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be gentle here. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> I find it funny, but it's also not surprising because everyone. Oh. You know, in America, whiteness like reigns superior, right? So it's kind of like this desire to be a part of the superiority like community. Yeah. But like the whole country is like that because like we look down on Cambodians and Khmer people because like we were chosen by the Vietnamese. You know, you go, and you go to Vietnam, like there's still like French buildings and some of that. And there, so there is definitely like a cash to being French, unfortunately. But you know, we try to remix it. And now we have delicious dishes like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did have a Vietnamese friend. It wasn't Richie who once said that uh, Vietnamese is a derivative 
of French. Yeah, cheese in Vietnamese is fromage, and fromage is, is French. So. Oh, so there is some vocab that they took. There is. Yeah, yeah, there is. I wouldn't say it's like correct. <laughs> so, right, so did you guys have you guys been to Europe? Yeah. Yes. Was the first place you went Paris? I went to Paris. Right? I went to Paris. I went to France. You know what? Though? We gotta go to the UK. No, you know what? I I'm didn't go to London. Huh? When I went to France, when I went to Paris, I was sitting there and I was like, this French food is dope, but like, yo, I need some pub. So I went and found like, I had to find Vietnamese food there. It's good. Her. Although it's funny because they call it Chinatown. It's full of Vietnamese. They're not there yet. They're, they're, they're not ready. There are Vietnamese people in Chinatown. Is that is this cool? This is a uh, bumbo Hanoi. So it's not a, it's not a dish that is like known to be from Hanoi. This is stuff that you'll get uh, in as a breakfast item. Bun is a very Viet northern Vietnamese thing, yeah. and northern Vietnamese food is very different than uh, you know. It, it's a lot. It's uh, not sweet. It's not sweet. It's fresh. It's like I don't know, like a little simpler, I think. So this is reminiscent of the, the you know northern Vietnamese food and restaurants that my family does like. All right, and then over here we've got. This is BVV. Oh, this you're saying the, the V rating. Maxi. This is a uh, bundao, mam tom. Mam tom, if you guys already know, is a fermented shrimp sauce. And so you're gonna go and dip uh, all these little goodies that we have here. We have some fried pork intestines, some fried tofu. We make this uh, zoi heo in house, which is a blood sausage. Uh, we make this jackom, which is also uh, a jade green rice uh, pork sausage. And then all these selection of herbs. So you're dipping, you're chasing, you're trying, you're dipping, and you're just going through the whole gamut. Mike, as someone with only one or two V's out of like five possible V's, Mike is right? like two V's. <laughs> you, take, you put Mike at two Mike V's? Two what do you, how many V's you got? I'm, I'm probably three V. Yeah. I'll, I'll take four. four. This, this is four. Four I'll out of five V? You know what though? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm say I'm still trying to get my fourth one. <laughs> okay, you got 3.5? <laughs> I'm 3.5. Shit, I mean, if you cook this and you serve this to the people though, you got, I, I gotta give you an extra half point for that. I mean, well, like I think what takes me back is that my Vietnamese is like, Set my trash. Like I learned, I, I know the full menu of any like Vietnamese spot. But if I'm trying to go and talk to my grandma, I might say hello and that's it. Like, right. Okay. Yeah. That, that's very Asian American. Yeah. That is very. Oh. Please, you guys, I'm gonna follow your lead. So what I did do is I go for the protein, then I go for the noodle, and then I go and finish it with the herbs. Oh my gosh, I wanna try this jade rice or pancake. Wait, this is a fried intestine? Fried intestine. Shit. We didn't think that it was gonna be something that was gonna be selling a lot, but um, to our surprise, they, I, I think people are down for it. I think they, they're down for trying something new and funky, and um, if they don't like the mom dom, then we uh, serve, serve it with some uh, bun bo chia sauce. Is that soy sauce? I like the sauce, I don't actually they like to do. Right. It's very intense. It's intense. It's intense. Man, this is like another. This is like going to another country right now. I get that for sure. I mean, I definitely people here look like they got some visas in their passport. They got some stamps. Yeah. <laughs> but also Vietnamese people come here as well too. They really enjoy what we're doing. It's so hard to find and, yeah. dishes anywhere. And that's else. awesome. I like to think about diversity not just in the sense of race or ethnicity, but like diversity and experiences. Right? Like we're all like so different and like. Even within like the experience of eating these food, we should be able to have a diverse range of experiences with a hole in the wall to this. And there's no right or wrong, it's just like something for everyone. Yeah, I honestly uh, do think as somebody who's not Vietnamese, but I spent a lot of time around Vietnamese people, I spent a lot of time around a lot of different types of Asians, the soulfulness of the Vietnamese people is something that always stands out to me. And me and Andrew talk about it because to be honest, we come from one of the groups that is considered one of the least sulfur. Since we are such a small population, there is more intent to, to showcase and be loud and vocal. Yeah. We are all always like conquered by one place or another. And this is the only time in our history that we've been able to represent ourselves. It's not controlled by the French or the Chinese. The Americans at one point too. And we're representing us. Hey, would you say that being a See, Mike kind of wipe a tear. <laughs> Y'all just trying to be real. Like, hey, Mike's like, hey, I just want I'm not gonna lie, man. You said that, like, I don't know how many interviews you did for this spot, but that shit sounded hey, smooth as shit. Vice, eat, eat that, Vice. You can't get that shit. You don't want that. You're not ready for that. Um, What about this right here? Oh, so that's a, this is our uh, soy lakam. So soy, sticky rice, um, this is something that you get for dessert, but this is tinted purple uh, from a vegetable leaf that we get from the lab. So these are leaves that we extract the dye from, um, and then that's what makes the, the color purple. It gets our uh, coconut sauce on top, some mung beans, some coconut flakes, um, and some peanuts and sesame. All right, you guys, we're nearing the end of the video. This is the last portion, and I think this is gonna be allow you guys to be the most creative. I, I'm always in tune with the Asian American narrative, and I 
I think for the longest time, Viet's were left out of the Asian American narrative, right? They, they could play Chinese on a show or whatever like that, but I remember my friend Richie, because Richie, I do believe, is from South Vietnam. Let's be honest, he's probably mixed with a bunch of stuff. He looks like half Puerto Rican, half Mexican, half Asian, right? Yeah. And he goes, bro, I'm not going to be able to play an Asian on Saturday morning TV, because they're going to look at me and be like, what the F are you? Like, you know, for example, Crazy Rich Asians, a lot of the uh, Asian representation that you see in mainstream media, it's not really including Southeast Asians yeah. yet. Right. I think it's coming, but it's hard to say when exactly. The people are just waiting for those stories, and I think that Vietnamese people have great stories. They have amazing stories because there's so much, you know, even the country being small, what you guys went through, the range of like, in the same family, you might have a kid who went to Yale, one kid who went to jail. But that is like so uncommon for other Asian groups. It's gonna go beyond the meme pages soon. But right now, at least the Viets are, are taking control and being like, yo, we're using these platforms and we're gonna represent ourselves. Like you guys came up in a generation where there wasn't Viet memes. You're the God Rice. Yeah. The God Rice generation. The God Rice. The Rice Boy. Rice Boy the generation. Rice boy. And then you get, you get the Kevin Wynn thing. You get it. What, what do you think about the, how Viets is like all hot on the memes right now? I've gone through that transition where my brother was a part of that about rice and then I was transferred to now where it's like memes have like Vietnamese words in them and oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's Ray Bay memes. Yeah, yeah, Ray Bay memes, like all these Vietnamese letters and I like if I know Vietnamese then I'll know this. But it's surprising how advanced the memes are. Like especially memes. They're, they're super deep cut, right? Like for me, I see the memes sometimes because I subscribe to one of those sub trades. I'm like, I don't I don't I have no idea. It's like if you know, you know. That's but sometimes even when I'm in there, I'm like, dude. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I'm low-key calmed out. That's kind of cool. We all kind of share the same thing. We didn't know that we knew all the same things. When someone pointed it out, it was like, ah, that was that that's just, that happened. And that's what makes our, our whole like community tighter. It's just like a collective memory that was, no one told us that that was a memory, but happened to be like all our families rode like Toyota, Camrys, Corollas, in the same beige and silver, and that like the same like uh, mat with like the massage on the, on the yeah, yeah, driver's yeah. seat. <laughs> like you know, the remote with the plastic wrap on that shit because you don't want to touch it because it's going to go and make it dirty. It's going to get more specific and it's just going to go and reinforce us. It's going to put us on a better path. Growing up not with the memes, uh, Can you get down with the memes? Like, are you, are you yeah. used to, How do you feel when you see yeah, it? You're like, like, what do you think? Are you are kind you of breaking it? Is there any sense of you that like that's not true, or you're like trying to judge the accuracy of it? Yeah. Or you're like, when I see memes, the first feeling I feel is I feel proud, and then I feel so impressed of all the meme makers. I'm like, yo, these kids are so talented and it's so clever. I'm like, who thinks of these things? So I'm super impressed and I'm really proud. When I see the memes. And that's how you know memes are real because even though I'm like a bit older than you guys, I, when I saw Kevin Nguyen, I was like, I know Kevin Nguyen, and it's just he never had a name before. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we call them something else. Memes are like just the first step to realizing that your culture is worth talking about. Because before, we didn't talk about our culture, at least not to other people. Or a lot of times we weren't even trying to do that because we were trying to like be somebody else. We were trying to be white or trying yeah. to be Chinese. Or like head down working hard. Or yeah, or like we were just like listening to Jaw Rule or whatever the f*** it was. And now it's like, oh well, our own culture, whatever that is, which is usually a remix of other things, mm -hmm is also worth talking about yeah. and uh, even if you don't get it that's the point you don't get it because you're not one of the culture so that's like that's the trick you know wait is it kevin Nguyen a gangster or no 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 okay, he's yeah, a party no. boy with gangster no, you know what, kevin, i could see a kevin win being a lambda i, yeah, I, I could totally I the asians that have like two blonde threads of bangs that's like, more of a like that's yeah that's that more like a, a yeah. to kevin. that's kevin's <laughs> older brother who went away for five years you know so now he's a mechanic yeah you know what i love about the memes too is that it's a it's kind of like a harmless way of stereotyping the difference is that the stereotype is coming from within from our own community and right. that's what's cool about social media it's coming out it's, it's not like than, someone else making exactly. out memes for us right it's yeah. not yeah. some guy named walter talking yeah, yeah. about Vietnamese right, right, right. people you gotta take control of the memes let's take control of our stereotypes <laughs> i guess what do you guys hope for the vietnamese american narrative moving forward i mean i'm sure you guys are all contributing into it in your own ways mike you're a vietnamese american comedian even though you're not you're not necessarily like that fan where it's like I never yeah, see you yeah, 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 yeah. do that. I mean, yeah, I think it's like about telling our stories and then like doing new things. I mean, it took a while for uh, the Korean American community to like finally invent Korean tacos, but like that was that is like a uniquely Korean American experience, and I think it's only a matter of time. This is the lab for those things, you know, like 
uh, all the people here at DND are like are doing things that eventually a new chapter is going to be written, and I'm excited about whatever that is. I, I want to see what what's next, you know. And I think memes is sort of like, in some ways, it's almost like the first step digitally to try to do that. And then after everybody understands what Kevin Nguyen is, then you can go on to Kevin Nguyen Part Two or whatever it is, you know. So. It's just awful cool. It's like maybe growing up, no one was like, hey, I want to be a comedian. I'm Vietnamese. I had no one to look to to see what that looks like. Or even like a young female entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, <laughs> young female entrepreneur. <laughs> My hope for the community is for everyone to continue leaning into who they are and leaning into everything that makes them unique and different and special and then also allow for everyone else to be who they are as well without judgment. I think this generation has like a lot to offer but the one thing is this exactly being the leaders of whatever field that you're doing so that way the next generation doesn't feel like they're too afraid to because someone ahead of them did so we don't have to be doctors and lawyers and whatnot because that was the, the safe way for like to earn money that's cool if you want to do that that's fine but if you really want to do something and you're afraid to do it and if our generation can go and have that like stand-up comedian who's gonna go and put this the, the set that tone for it it's not as bad and it's not as hard to do it so that we have a whole generation of people who want to do what the fuck they want to do that's the whole goal when the first person does it then they can go and create that chain and that's what we're trying to do too I'm hoping that like a lot of my my generation after me they, if they want to be a cook and they're afraid to do it, then I did it. I'm okay. What comes along with having like the reflection of role models is like helping each other, right? I think a lot of our parents, when they grew up in a time of scarcity, like they're trying to survive, there's not a lot of room to help each other as much. We have like that, um, you know, divide and conquer mentality. So I hope that with our generation and younger ones that we do what we're doing so that we can inspire other people, but also that we help each other and support each other as well. I love that. And uh, I'll close off by saying, uh, going off of what you and Mike said, it's like, uh, one, I think places like DND are writing the next chapter of Vietnamese food and culture, win coffee supply as well. And yeah, and, and definitely like, uh, I just hope that the younger generation can use the comfort that they grew up with and use it to push the culture because you're right, it was hard to push culture when it was just survival mode. But now that people are not really in survival mode, what are we going to use that? comfort for. Thriving mode. Yeah. <laughs> Not just survive and thrive. I think just the only thing I can say is just that I learned from the Vietnamese community that growing up was just to be fearless. Mm. All right, you guys, thank you so much, you guys, for joining us on the episode of Fun Bros Food and Culture. Uh, I don't know. I think this was... A I haven't watched every Vietnamese American piece on YouTube. I think this is the best one ever made. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, I would support that. Maybe the only one. This, yeah. this was an amazing discussion. I think people should have these discussions more. But this is always something that we want to do on our channel is to just have these open, fun, no holds barred. Like, no one's going to get offended. We're all just here. And we're all on the same page of what we want this video to do. Someone will watch thank this and, and relate. Yeah. yeah. And I hope it inspires a lot of people. So thank you, everybody. Thank for, you for having us. Guys, 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 guys yo. Thank you. D and D. Uh, check out Asian on Asian. Come by. I think, it's the, I think it's the best Asian podcast out there. Stop by D and D. We're doing brunch. We're doing dinner service. Follow us on Instagram. She has a coffee company. Click below. <laughs> Click below. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications. This video a big thumbs up for the right algorithm. Here. We probably should have told you to do that half an hour ago. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you D and D. I got Safe Harbor. You are you kids look it up. Oh, safe Harbor. You in index funds? Wow, you're shouting out to the 401k. You got ETFs. What? Yo, Vanguard. So, Nick is name dropping his 401k. So would you right now. say that you're just dressing now, now he's this way? You're, you're, you're just you're dressing bragging. this way to overcompensate for the fact that you have 401k employee matching. <laughs> okay. He's dressing this way because it's expensive. Yeah, how about this?